What's up everybody? You're very welcome along to Tuesday Night Late Night Agenda. And look, we've got a lot to get through. I suppose we should start off with the really good news today, which is that Trent Alexander-Arnold and Jordan Henderson have both been named in Gareth Southgate's 26-man squad for the Euros. There had been a lot of stuff, and the original story that Trent wasn't included stemmed from ESPN and their chief football writer. So I think he's got to have a few questions to answer today. But thankfully, we were able to get the news out to our subscribers group earlier on, or excuse me, our membership group earlier on, uh, we told our Discord group around lunchtime today that Trent was going to be included in the squad because we got the nod from a couple of friendly journalists. So thank you to those journalists and thank you to our Discord group as well. We did tell you guys that we do sneak information in there from time to time. So if you want to become a member of Anfield Agenda FC, that'll get you into the Discord group, folks. There is a fee of 4 99 a month, same as membership on most other channels. But we do put the stuff in there that we're not quite comfortable releasing to the public and stuff for various reasons but look how are we all i know a lot of you are probably here wanting the giveaway and i will be announcing the winner in a few minutes time so bear with me on that one what an afternoon it's been putting all of these names together going through everyone's comments making sure that they were subscribers making sure that we had everybody in as well who'd entered the competition so thank you to everyone that did enter and i will announce the winner shortly but look, ladies and gents, what do we want to get stuck into tonight? I mean, we've got the good news about Trent and Hendo in the England squad, which is brilliant for both the guys, and I hope that they uh, have a good tournament and come back injury-free. We've got the stuff around Pats and Daka, Rafinha news has started to pop up a little bit as well, and lots of other bits and pieces. Um, I've got a bit more of a definitive bit of news around um, Neuhaus as well, because I know a lot of you guys have been asking me around Neuhaus and Bruce Munch and Gladbach, and I'll go through that as well in a couple of minutes. Uh, but yeah, let's all start off with just taking a second out of our very busy days to all have a little chuckle at Carlo Ancelotti packing his bags and getting the fuck out of Everton as soon as he could possibly get an opportunity to. All the planning, all the building, all the talk of getting them back into Europe. As soon as he gets you a sniff from Real Madrid, Carlo's packing up his bags. He's out of Everton's Finch Farm training complex and he's on the road and on his way back to Real Madrid. So, uh, yeah, yeah. And then, funnily enough, a couple of names mentioned for the Everton job, Rafael Benitez and Steven Gerrard. Okay, best of luck with that one, lads. Madness. I know it's mad, isn't it? Oh, God bless them. God bless them, ladies and gentlemen. The Mersey billionaires haven't got a manager at the minute, and they think that maybe Steven Gerrard or Rafael Benitez would take up the job. Okay. Um... I'm not as confident in that one, ladies and gents. I don't know about you, but there you go. There you go. Bit of happy news to start today. Um, right, If it true, is it true that the bidders want Gerard? Look, I don't use the phrase bidders anymore, mate. It landed me in a whole lot of trouble. But it is uh, believed that Stephen Gerrard and Rafael Benitez are on a six-man shortlist for Everton's new managerial job. Um, I know for a fact Steven Gerrard won't take the job. I can't speak for Rafael Benitez, of course. You know, he does have a fondness for Merseyside. Does he have a, still have a home there as well? So, yeah, but I'd be amazed. I'd be absolutely amazed. Um, a lot of people were wondering about the likes of... Um, What's his face that left Wolves as well? Nuno. It looks like Nuno could be about to take over at Crystal Palace. Now, it was tough for a while that he may take over at Spurs after... Um, They've lost their manager as well. Well, they sacked Jose Mourinho. But there was talk that maybe Nuno would step up to Spurs. It looks like Crystal Palace are moving quickly to try and get Nuno there as their manager. So, you know, a lot of managerial vacancies, a bit of merry-go-round happening as well. But, um, yeah, don't even ask me about Coutinho on today's stream. Because from this point on, for the rest of the summer, I'm ignoring any questions that are aimed my way about Felipe Coutinho. Because I feel like I've answered them quite a lot. Um, Sal to Liverpool said Kieran Toner there was a couple of articles doing the rounds today Kieran that Liverpool may uh, rival Manchester United for Saul Niguez from Atletico Madrid I don't believe that to be the case mate I don't think Liverpool will pay the cost and again I would say that I think there's better value out there but let's move on to a couple of absolute possibilities for Liverpool and I'll start off with the one that seems to be gathering a little bit of momentum I want to caveat what I'm about to say by saying that from the people that I know and trust I haven't had any confirmation of this but I want to just put the stories out that are out there today. So, Pats and Daka. 20 million euro seems to be the price that will get Pats and Daka out of Salzburg to wherever. Now, Freddie Canude is his representative and he spoke back in April as well and already sounded the alarm bells for Salzburg and saying that Daka will probably look for a new challenge at the end of the season. Before I came on yesterday, um, to my knowledge, 
West Ham were the, the most serious in their interest of Pats and Dakar. But that doesn't mean that Liverpool aren't in the conversation or that Liverpool haven't been working behind the scenes. It could just be a case of, I don't know about it, you don't know about it, and a few people don't know about it. But you think about it logistically. Good relationship with Salzburg and the, and the Red Bull clubs. Previous business done there as well. Um, Canade brought from Leipzig, another Red Bull club. And the more you think about this, the more you see his numbers. 34 goals this season again, which is another good return for Pats and Daka. I am absolutely all over this. And if that £17 million price point is correct, I would bite their hands off at £17 million. Now, I know he's not the sexy name that some Liverpool fans want. He's not a Jadon Sancho. He's not a Kylian Mbappe. He's not a Haaland. He's not a Harry Kane. But he is a damn good footballer. And Liverpool have a habit of picking up these little bargains and transforming them or bringing them on to the next stage of the career. And what has often happened before is Liverpool allowed one more step in the process. So if we're taking Dakar as an example, the Liverpool of three, four years ago might allow Dakar to go to the likes of a West Ham or a Southampton or whoever it might be. And then a year or two later, we'll end up paying two, three times the fee they paid to get them out of the club. I think Liverpool are trying to learn from those lessons and work out these calculated gambles like... Whatever we think about the Takumi Minamino situation, we will probably be able to make a profit on Taki if and when he gets sold over the summer. So I think that there, there probably is some legs to the Pats and Daka stuff. And maybe that's a bit more hope for me than anything else because I can see Daka, I can see Rafinha. They're all imminently possible transfers for Liverpool because the fees are realistic. Um, and they're players that have shown what they can do but that we feel as a club and maybe us as fan base that we can see push on a little bit further uh, let me just welcome a member back uh, Anfield Agenda FC Jack Murray welcome to Anfield Agenda FC dude thank you very much you will of course get a link to our Discord group now my man check out the community tab of the YouTube channel you'll see that link there if you've any issues give us a heads up mate and I'll make sure to steer you in the right direction I'm really good Dazzling Daniel thank you who am I backing for the Euros I'm not backing anybody. Um, I will be covering the Euros here on Anfield Agenda. We'll be doing all the England games. Uh, we'll be doing the, the Germany, France, Portugal group as well. So loads of good stuff coming up. Um, Fats Woo News. Nothing. I don't... I don't hold any water on that one, mate. You know, that was only broken from a, a Ghana source yesterday and nobody else seems to have a clue about it. So I don't know is the honest answer, mate, but neither does anybody else other than that one Twitter account that seemed to post it um, from Ghana. But, you know, I don't know anything on it, to be honest with you. Uh, Rafinha. Okay, so Rafinha, a couple of different news sources saying that Liverpool are close to putting in a bid for Rafinha of around £32 million. I would question whether that would be enough personally. Um, he, he came in Leeds record signing. I think if my memory is right, it was around £18 million from Ron. And after one season there working with Marcello Bielsa, we can see how good of a player Rafinha is. And I'm still unsure on this one. Now, I'm not unsure of his capabilities. I'd have no problem if we signed Rafinha. I just can't get any confirmation whatsoever that Liverpool are absolutely actively pursuing him. Uh, but that doesn't mean it's not true. I just, you know, I'll always be honest. If I don't know something, I'll tell you. But the Pats and Dakar stuff, I'm getting a bit more... It's still cool from the journalists that I'm messaging and chatting with, but it's a bit more less categorical no. So Pats and Dakar could be a genuine possibility. And don't let his price tag fool you. He would be an absolute snip at that price point. And if that allows us to bring in another attacking wide player, a creative midfielder, then that's great. And if we ended up this summer with, let's say, we bring in Canade, we bring in Dakar, and let's say, just for argument's sake, we bring in a Rafinha, I'm all right with that. Genuinely. It's not the names that we would have all perhaps hoped for, but if you add them to the players that are coming back from injury for us, and maybe we add one more if we move a few bodies on, I don't think that's the worst summer by any stretch of the imagination. I think that that will see us right back in the mix next season. I really, really do. Ask Grizz for transfers. Why on earth would I do that, mate? Um, I've known Grizz for years, by the way. Nothing against Grizz, but I don't need to ask Grizz for any transfer information. But um, if you are watching Grizz, by the way, hello, mate. I hope you're well. hope the family are well. Uh, what else have we got? But City and Chelsea are spending 200 million. Here's my answer to that, genuinely. Okay, we won't be spending 200 million, but just because somebody spends more money on players doesn't necessarily make them the right buys. 
And I'm not trying to be a, a, an FSG apologist here. I'm still fuming over what happened with the European Super League. And like anybody else, I would hope we'd be in for Sancho or Mbappe. But I wouldn't worry about what other clubs are doing. I would only worry about what we're doing and if we're adding the right players to the right positions to strengthen the squad and the starting eleven. And a recruitment team has pretty much gotten it fairly spot on over year of the recent years. So I would say um, just bear with it and see what happens. But the more I, I talk to people on this, the more I doubt we're going to see a Sancho or an Mbappe. So the likes of a Rafinha and stuff starts to make more sense. And um, I, I'm not against it, I have to say. I mean, I would love a Sancho. I'd love that type of a transfer, but... There are some good value buys to be had out there and, and Pats and Daka would certainly strengthen our attack. Let's say, for instance, just as an example, we moved Divock Origi on. He'd been linked with Fenerbahce, although I think they wanted a loan with an option to buy, which I can't see Liverpool being interested in. Um, Shakiri also linked to Fenerbahce. I spoke last night about the £6 million price tag that was put on him and I think that's way too cheap. I mean, surely 10 to £12 million minimum for Shakiri, and I can't see Liverpool loaning Origi out, so... If you moved Origi on and you brought Pats and Daka in, to me, that's strengthening the squad. I don't know if people would agree with me or not, but for me, that's that's an upgrade because I'd be a lot happier with Daka coming in than keeping Origi. And let's say you moved Shakiri on and you freed up a squad place and you brought in Rafinha, Neto, somebody like that. I still think that's strengthening the squad. Add to that Gomez coming back, Van Dijk coming back, Hendo be back at the start of next season. Um... But that still leaves us with the same lingering doubts, doesn't it? And I'm not going to sit here and be a hypocrite and say that I don't have massive reservations and fears about the likes of Alex Oxley chamberlain and Naby Keita's injuries and Joel Matip's as well. There are three players that, for me... How do I say this without being mean? I've given every chance I can give to those players in my head. Now, of course, my opinion does not matter one jot, but... I wouldn't, I wouldn't keep them. I'd move them all on if, if it was an option. Particularly Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain and, um, and uh, Joel Matip, sorry. Um, I think that they've had every opportunity over the years to prove fitness and they've never managed an entire season without a couple of injuries. And I mean a couple of injuries that keeps them out for at least four weeks at a pop. Um, what have we got? I'm done with Kada, said CR7. If the right offer came in for Kada, I'd be, I'd be all for Liverpool moving him on. Now, I spent the entirety of last season standing up for Naby Kada, saying that I think there's more to come, speaking about the fact that Liverpool's medical department, the sports department, or sports and science department, excuse me, nutrition department, have been working really, really hard with Naby Kada to try and up his level, how do I say this, strengthen his core and basically work on his physical attributes to stop his body breaking down under the rigors of Premier League football. And he didn't even last the last period of the season when he came back without picking up another knock that kept him out for the end of the season. Um, so for me, I get you. I, I would agree. If if Oxley chamberlain and if Kada and if Matip, if suitable offers came in that worked for everybody, I'd have no, no problems with that whatsoever. Uh, Nicola Berea, I will talk about him as well, Ross. Yes, yeah, so... It's, it's open news that Inter Milan need to free up about 70 million quid. It's rumoured that they have some offers on the table. I think one of about 52 million for Nicola Barea, but they're holding out for more money. And if they're holding out for more money at 52 million quid, I can't see Liverpool going in any higher than that, to be honest with you. Because as good a player as he is, and he's a very good player... This not the level that we'll be entertaining at this summer with regards to coming in and signing a midfielder when we've got far more pressing positions for me that we need to, to strengthen. Um, but he is a very fine footballer, Barea, I have to say. Uh, I haven't seen any rumours. Someone in the chat there, Sir Oswald Fortitude, is saying Keita to Real Madrid rumours. Mate, I'm not saying you're wrong. I haven't seen anything of that myself. Uh, right, Neuhaus. Let's talk about Neuhaus. Right, so... Again, I reached, I did tell you guys I've got people, I've got very few journalists in England that I'm really friendly with, but I do have some good sources in Germany and some good sources in Spain. So I reached out to those people in Germany asking about Neuhaus and what the plan is. And apparently it goes a little something like this. Borussia Mönchengladbach are not going to sell him this summer and it's an open secret apparently in Germany that Bayern Munich are going to come back and snap him up at the end of next season. 
that's all I can say to you. Um, because I told you it'd gone very quiet on Neuhaus. House. I hadn't seen anything related to Liverpool. But today, when I did reach out, that's the reply that I got. That it's kind of an open secret over there that he's going to go to Bayern Munich at the end of next season. So take from that what you want. But again, that's just what I've been told. Uh, John Summers, welcome back to Anfield Agenda FC. You do thank you very much. Great to have you with us again. Uh, what have we got? Renato Sanchez. Again, mate, nothing new. Um, he has definitely, definitely, excuse me, been linked. We've talked about this before, but I've got nothing on that for you. I wish I did, but um, ha coming back from an injury towards the end of the season for Lille obviously played a vital part. Do you know what, though? I said this yesterday. I'm going to repeat it again. I need to eat a big slice of humble pie, ladies and gentlemen, because um, I'm all in on a Kone, if, if that's an option for us, by the way. And that's only from 15 minutes I've been playing yesterday. In that 15 minutes, I've already decided that I'd like him at Liverpool. Um, obviously, another part of that Lille title win inside. And again, if the price point is to believe, 25 million quid seems very, very reasonable for somebody who is um, as talented as a Kone I've seen. And just watching him yesterday... I, I see it. I see now what all the fuss is about with you guys and why you've been uh, hounding me about him and asking me about him because he looks good. He looks very, very good. And uh, yeah, I'd be all over that one as well if that was the case. And that's the type of calibre of player I think we can expect to see this year coming in. Somebody who has performed but maybe has gone under the radar of some of the bigger clubs around Europe. Somebody like Rafinha, somebody like Ikone, somebody like... Uh, Pedro Neto, somebody like Basuma I'll get to in a second by the way because there's a well publicised story doing the rounds today about Basuma so I'll get to that in a second would I rather have Barea or Thielmans um, for what we need I probably edge towards Thielmans on that one but I think Bar this is going to sound really fucking stupid by the way I think Barea is a better footballer but I'd rather have Tillman's at Liverpool. And I don't know if that makes any sense to anybody else, but in my head it makes sense. Uh, Daka is good enough to play for Liverpool. He is, Alex, yes. He absolutely is. Uh, again, Ty, I've said it once. I've said I'm going to say it one more time. I'm not going to answer anything about Felipe Coutinho because I've, I'm blue in the face talking about Coutinho. I've given you the reason why he won't be coming back to Liverpool many times, and I, I can't say it over and over again because I'll just annoy people. Right, look. We'll do the giveaway, shall we? Because I'm sure that's why a lot of people are here. Um, I do have the names on my phone for the three winners. The major prize winner, the second prize winner, the third prize winner. So, if you are one of the lucky winners, just email us, partnerships at anfieldagenda.com with your information. We'll check it out to make sure it's really you. And then, of course, we'll sort out your prizes. So, the three winners are as follows. One second, Connor sent them to me earlier on. The first prize winner, the winner of a £250 Amazon gift card, your shirt of any choice that you want from 3retro.com, your pick of any Liverpool shirt this season, a Manscaped 3.0 perfect package set with thanks to manscaped.com. Don't forget to use the code WFM20 for 20% off. And the other prize was a set of Samsung Live earbuds. The winner of that prize is a gentleman by the name of Joe Harvey. Joe Harvey. So, Joe, what you got to do, mate, just email us or contact us on any of our social media accounts and we'll get you sorted out, mate. We'll get that stuff posted over to you. Congratulations, Joe. Uh, we have a second prize and a third prize as well, by the way, which is, of course, a £50 Amazon gift card for each second and third place. So, second place is Tom Hume, spelled H-U-L-M-E. So, Tom, contact us, mate, and I'll get you sorted out with that one. And Cam Vlogs, Cam Vlogs is the winner of the third prize, which is another £50 Amazon gift card. So reach out to us, guys. We'll get those prices sorted out for you. And don't worry, ladies and gentlemen, if you didn't win these, stick with us, because as always, we're going to run lots and lots of more giveaways, because we like to give back to the community that's put us up to where we are. Without you guys, we wouldn't be shit. We know it, you know it, and we want to keep giving back. So we're going to work for more giveaways, more sponsored stuff on the channel that we can give back to you guys as well. So thank you for that one. But look, let's keep going. Um, what do you think about Myron Bod? Don't know who he is. Sorry. Again, I, I'm not rude. I don't know who he is. Uh, right, what else have we got? So, Basuma. Basuma, Basuma, Basuma. So, the article that's out doing the rounds today suggests that Liverpool are now willing to walk away from their interest... Twest? What's twist? <laughs> from their interest in uh, Yves Basuma of Brighton because apparently the price tag now is 50 million quid. The one that had been doing the rounds on the media for the past few weeks had been between 30 and 40 million. But I, I love this, by the way. 
you can see who doesn't give a fuck about the channel and who's legged it off by the fact that 150 people dropped out as soon as I announced the winner of the giveaway. That tells me everything that I need to know about certain people in the community. But anyway, um, Basuma, yeah, it seems to be 50 million quid right now is the price point for him. And look, we're not going to do business at 50 million quid. It's, uh, it's just not going to happen. So if that's his price tag, we won't be involved in it. If Arsenal go and pay 50 million quid for him, fair enough, but Liverpool won't be by the looks of it. Um, what else have we got? He ain't worth 50 million. I would say you're right, mate. I mean, I like Basuma. I've said this to you many times on the stream. I think he's a very talented footballer. I think he could absolutely do a job, but not for 50 million. Not when you could get maybe somebody like Barea or... And look, actually, if we're going off what we're talking about at the start of the stream, you could get Pats and Daka and Rafinha for about that price tag, apparently. So, yeah, it's uh, it's way too much money for me for Basuma, if that's the case. And I think the club will probably think likewise. Anything on Mbappe? Nothing. And I don't think, I said this yesterday, I don't think you'll see anything on Mbappe until after the Euros, because, you know, he'll be away with France for that competition, um, have a little break then. And, of course, I think he'll be monitoring the situation at both Paris Saint-Germain and Real Madrid. I wouldn't be surprised at all if Mauricio Pochettino takes up the job at Spurs, which may or may not happen. I wouldn't be surprised if PSG make a play for Zinedine Zidane to try and tempt uh, Kylian Mbappe to sign on there because we all know it's an open secret that he loves Zinedine Zidane. He's his idol. He looks up to him and was a big part of the reason why he wanted to go and play at Real Madrid. So maybe they'll try and lure Zidane to Paris and maybe that's a way of trying to get Kylian Mbappe to sign on for a new deal. Uh, Rommel, thank you for the super chat. Rommel James Batista said, very happy for Trent. Much love from Chicago, Illinois. Thank you, mate. Much love right back over to you as well. And yeah, I'm delighted. Um, I'm delighted for Trent as well and for Hendo. John West says, any news on Pedro Goncalves, I think is how I pronounce it. No, but that's another interesting one, mate. Um, if you want to annoy United fans and wind them up about something, by the way, just keep saying to them, well, it was after Bruno left and Pedro Goncalves came into midfield there that they actually won the league title. So maybe the real midfield superstar is actually still at Porto. Or not Porto, excuse me, um, Sporting. And, you know, he stepped in there to fill the boots left. I don't know if there's any genuine interest in him, but there's enough media outlets reporting it that... Uh, it's certainly something that we should be keeping an eye on as fans. And his statistics this season are really good as I was going through them the other day. What do I think about Roman Berkey as a backup keeper? He's shite. Sorry, Jordi, I don't mean to be rude, but Roman Berkey is dog shit. And I mean that sincerely. He is all kinds of Adrian. I mean, no, 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 no. Berkey's terrible. Uh, and I think even Dortmund fans would agree with me on that. I mean, the, I've spoken to Dortmund fans who've been very critical of Roman Berkey. Uh, Liverpool need to offer Salah a contract, said Zakir. Yes. No no argument for me, Zakir. Um, all the front three have two years left on their deals at Liverpool at this moment in time. And I agree with you, mate. They could all do with being given a new deal. But we know that Fabinho is going to be offered a new deal. We know Van Dijk's going to be offered a new deal. We think that Alisson may be offered a new deal. So what I was saying yesterday, and I'll, I'll go back over for people that may have missed it, is... And I'm not saying this is right, by the way, because it hurts me to even say this, but... I get the feeling that what we're going to hear over the coming weeks is, well, Liverpool have taken up a whole chunk of money by renewing the contracts of X, Y and Z. And because of that, we haven't got that much money for transfers. I know we hear it every single summer and I'm as annoyed at it as everybody else. But I also don't want to lose any of the lads that are here. The likes of Salah, the likes of Mane, the likes of uh, Virgil van Dijk, Alisson, Fabinho. I mean, they do deserve new contracts, to be fair. So... Maybe that's why we'll see the likes of a Rafinha or um, another name, by the way, that hasn't really been mentioned much. We spoke about Yuri Thielman from, from Leicester, but I have to say I'm quite a fan of Harvey Barnes from Leicester. And if we were looking to bring in a player from Leicester, I think we could do a lot worse than maybe trying to poach Harvey Barnes out there because I think he's a cracking footballer. I really do. I think he'd fit into Jurgen Klopp's way of playing very straightforward as well. Uh, Nat Phillips not on the England squad as robbery. Yeah, apparently Nat Phillips could be on his way out as well for around 10 million. Now, that would be some turnaround, wouldn't it, in his career if he went for that type of a fee. Hussam Awar, again, just got knocked out of the under-21 Euros yesterday with France after losing 2-1 to the Netherlands. And I would imagine Hussam Awar will have a bit of a holiday now. And then he will probably talk with um, Jean-Michel Aulas, the Lyon president, about his options. And I think... 
I think there's some type of agreement, some type of agreement, excuse me there, that he will be allowed to leave Leon for a more respectable or more reasonable fee than perhaps in recent years. And um, again, where he goes, I won't lie, I've no idea whatsoever. Um, a lot of the links that you're going to see on social media are just fans throwing links up there that, that really, you know, it's more wishful thinking than any other stuff. But um, again, another cracking footballer and somebody who missed a whole heap of chances yesterday, by the way, for France to see off that game. But, you know, for the right price, I think Hussein Moir, again, is another no-brainer. So there's so many players you'll mention to me and I'd say yes, because there's no shortage of talent available this summer. Craig, are you going to the Liverpool convention in Vegas next May? Nope, I never receive any invites, Glenn, to any invites, excuse me, to any of that type of stuff. So no invite, no Craig. Um... What make Ikone impress me? His speed, obviously. His being able to, to run with the ball, which I know sounds really simple, but it's something that not too many people can do really well. But also his game intelligence. Like there was in the 15 minutes spell I watched them, there was two drops of his shoulder that left the defender dead. So the ball played into him, he drops frames, drops his right shoulder, or left shoulder, excuse me, spins behind the defender's gone. I was just I'm a sucker for a wide forward with pace, mate, and somebody who runs at defenders. And what I seen in a cone, I ticked every one of my um, <laughs> my uh, attacking juices, shall we say. And um, yeah, from the few minutes I did see of him, and look, it is just a few minutes, but uh, he looks quality. Buendia or Fakir? I don't think that Fakir will be leaving Real Betis, um, nor has he done enough at Real Betis to convince me that we should go back in from again. I think the Fakir stuff died when we didn't get him. For whatever reason, whether it be the knee or whatever it was, I don't know. Buendia is coming back up with Norwich, so I'd be amazed if Norwich looked to move him on, having kept him when they were in the championship. But he's a very good footballer, Emiliano Buendia. Pedro, Neto, Kieran, I've tried to find out on, because Neto and Rafinha are the two, the two most likely ones for me that, in my own head, and I'm just basing this off my own thought process, and... I've not heard anything on Pedro Neto, absolutely nothing. But the Rafinha stuff, you know, you've seen Bobby's post as well, trying to trying to lure him towards Anfield. And, you know, they are away, I think, at least Bobby's away now with Brazil, getting ready for the Copa America, which is taking place in Brazil now instead of Argentina, starting on June the 13th, I think. Uh, did you see that we supposedly met with Chananoglu's representatives? We didn't. Sorry, Jordi. Um, to my knowledge, that's nonsense. Um put out there from the Italian side of it. Um, now, from what I've been told, most likely destination for Hakan Chananoglu is Juventus. Uh, and Juventus do love a free transfer, mate. Um, so I would suggest that Juventus is probably his most likely destination. Um, Agent Bobby back on the job. You love to see it, don't you, Arif? You love to see it, mate. What about Ishmael Assar? Um, definitely somebody who we had interest in before, Lewis. And I think... I. I Again, I like to give credit in these things where, when possible. And I think, I'm almost certain it was Melissa Reddy that wrote a really good article around the Liverpool's approach to the Potsy family in Watford for Ishmael Assar. And the fee that we were quoted and the way it would have to be paid is what I think put us off that. Uh, off the top of my head, it was somewhere close to 50 million quid and wanted it all in one go. Which, as we know, by the way, Liverpool signed Diogo Jota and um, Thiago Alcantara. That's not the way that we're looking to do business now. We like to put down X amount and then pay the rest of it off over the course of the contract and that they weren't interested in that one. So, but Watford coming back up to the Premier League, I would suggest he'll probably stay there for another season. Um, who do you think will sign realistically? Please bear in mind, Ross, I'm happy to answer your question, mate, but this is just my opinion. I'm not saying this is gospel or anything like it, but... Daka makes perfect sense to me. Rafinha or Neto make perfect sense to me. Hussein Moir, perfect sense to me. Um, the backup goalkeeper is the one I really struggle with because outside of Ergakan Kakir, I've not really seen any links to a keeper that would fill me full of confidence. Like a gentleman earlier on in the chat suggested Roman Berkey and that would, that would be all kinds of Adrian all over again in my head. So I have to say I'm drawing a blank on that one. Uh, we're not going to be bringing in any fullbacks, so there'll be nobody coming in to 
oust Nico Williams. He's going to be kept as a backup for Trent. Nobody coming in to replace Costa Simicus. He's going to get his opportunity as a backup for Robbo. So outside of that, we've got our centre-back in Canade. Um, I think Ben Davies and Nat Phillips will move on. So we'll probably go into the season with Canade, Gomez, Van Dijk, Matip and... It remains to be seen then if there's one other. Am I forgetting the centre back there? No, if there's one other or if maybe Reese Williams will stay. Uh, Seb van den Berg looks like he's going to go back out on loan. Um, he's very happy at Preston. I don't know if that's where he'll go back to. Um, who else is there? Reese Williams will probably go out on loan. So if that is the case, then, you know, do we need to bring in somebody? Because unless we keep Ben Davies, who, you know, I still believe we'll move on, but you know the word that's been put out there by some of the local-based journalists is that Ben Davies will be at the club next season and that he didn't get a chance to prove what he can do. So, you know, wait and see on that one. But for me, I think it's a forward and either a wide forward or an attacking midfielder. That would be my guess at the two positions that are left. Now, that's not to say that if we move on some players, the likes of Agruic, Wilson, Shakiri, Origi... Um, that we may not bring in an extra body somewhere. I, I don't know who that might be yet, but you know a lot could depend on outgoings. Kelleher's going to go out on loan. So Kelleher has been promoted to the club's number two. So technically he is ahead of, um, ahead of Adrian in the pecking order. But he needs first team football, both for his international career with Ireland and obviously to show what he can do on a consistent basis. And that's the problem with having a young keeper like that at a club. You don't want to stifle his progression, but how do you give him enough minutes as well? So I think we'll see an experienced keeper brought in. Now, whether Adrian signs on for another year or not, um, I think he'll probably go back to Spain. But I would say I would say Callagher is almost certain to go unknown somewhere. Uh, you should check out Daishi. Come out. I don't know who that is, but I will have a look. Khaled, thank you very much, mate, for the super chat. Any players we should sell? Not really outside of the fringe players. I mean, I know Wilson divides Liverpool fans a lot. Um, I don't think he's consistently shown that he's good enough. So, Gruyich, Wilson, um, Phillips. Gruyich, Wilson, Phillips. And a few more will probably go out the door. The likes of Origi, Shakiri, and players like that. But I don't think we're going to see a summer where we sell any, any serious contenders or anybody who we'd be fuming about moving on. I don't see a Bobby going. I don't see a Mane going. I don't see a Salah going. So that's good news because, you know, that's the base you want to start from is making sure that the players that are coming back from injury and the players that have given us success are still at the club. Uh, I agree, by the way, about the Goncalves guy. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say I watch Sporting Lisbon week in and week out, but the press that he's received, the scouting reports that I've read suggest that he looks like a genuine talent, Neil. So, you know, it could be a possibility. Uh, I did, I know my door rang, mate. Don't worry, it was answered. I think it was one of my daughter's friends. But good looking out, mate. Good looking out. Thank you. Uh, what have we got? I personally think Nat Phillips is good enough for Liverpool. I suppose there's, there's two ways of looking at that. Um, one, he's definitely shown that he's probably of a higher level than we thought before January anyway. But on the other side of it, if Liverpool were to try and cash in and make good money on him, because he's probably going to be a fifth-choice centre-back, if we're being really honest about it, then this is probably the summer to do that, to cash in when we're talking about maybe a 10 million quid fee for him. He could have been going for less than a million quid um, in January with the clubs he was linked with. So if you're talking about 10 million from now, it's probably the right time to cash in. And also, it allows him to go and have a good career as well, hopefully in the Premier League. So there's two ways of looking at it, from the club side, from the fan side. And I think it's the right time to sell Nat Phillips for his own career, as well as, of course, to try and get as, most money, as much money as possible into the club. Um, what have we got? You should check out... There's no, there's no backup for Trent, mate. I've already told you. Nico Williams is staying at the club. There is going to be no backup for Trent being brought in. Um... I don't mean to be rude about that. That's just what's been put out there. And the manager himself has even been speaking about that, I think. Selling Phillips is a crime against Scousality. Uh, I think it's the right call, to be honest with you, Neil. I mean, we'll always have fond memories of Nat Phillips and what he's done because he was a huge, huge part of us getting Champions League football. And that should never be forgotten about. But at the same time, the way that we play and the way that we like to play with a high line and pace 
when Van Dijk is back particularly, Canale there, Gomez there, he's not really going to get much of a look in, to be honest, mate. Um, and there are probably clubs like a Burnley that will, he'd suit a lot more in their style of play. Um, what do we got? What do we think about Ramsey or Adama Traore? Uh, Ramsey won't be happening. We don't need another injury-prone player at the club. As good as he is, by the way. I'm, I'm not knocking um, how good Aaron Ramsey is as a footballer. Adama Traore looks like he's going to sign on at Wolves again by you know the, the things that I've been reading. And again, a word of caution around Adama. You've probably seen him getting greased up before matches with baby oil or whatever it is. That's to... You know, I initially, I have to say, I was as guilty of this as anyone. I initially thought that that was to just stop people grabbing him because he's forever getting fouled, isn't he? Because, you know, when he gets up ahead of steam and he gets running, he's very difficult to stop. But apparently he's had five or six dislocated right shoulders over the past couple of seasons. And that's one of the reasons why I think twice over the last year alone, he's, he's popped out that right hand shoulder in a game. So that's probably why we may stay clear of Adama. Now, Alan a Maxima, I'd be all over that as well. I mean, it took me a while to get on board that train, but I have to say, if he was somebody Liverpool looked at, it wouldn't. I wouldn't bat an eyelid at him. He looks another genuine talent. Who is your main priority signing at Liverpool? Um, to me, Pat and Daka ticks so many boxes. It ticks the price point. Um, a different type of forward that we'd have, somebody who can play through the centre, Somebody who has pace, somebody who we've seen first-hand play against us as well. So Pat and Daka, to me, at that type of price point, would be it would be nonsense not to be interested at seventeen million quid like that. That would be an absolute bargain. Other than that, kind of mindful of Harvey Elliott coming back, and I don't want to see the club block his progression through as well. So, you know, if we do sign another wide player like Rafinha or Neto, um. I'll be a bit wary about what's going to happen with Harvey Elliott because weirdly I think we're getting into the Champions League has worked against Harvey Elliott. I think if we were in the Europa League and thank God we're not, you could see a pathway where he could get a lot more games next season. He'd probably get all the Europa League group games, maybe the FA Cup, League Cup. But now that we're in the Champions League, and I'm just guessing here because I don't know the answer to this, but uh, perhaps his opportunities may be a little bit more limited. So... Would that then play on Kloppo's mind about sending him out on loan to a Premier League club? Um, I hope we don't because he's a baller. He is a proper, proper player, Harvey Elliott, and also a, a red through and through as well. Uh, Johnson is a backup keeper. I, I have to say he very much impressed me, by the way, uh, for West Brom. And he made it into the England final squad as well. So... The only thing I'd say again is, is he going to want to come in and be a backup keeper? That's the problem you have when you're looking for a backup keeper. Um, keeper's chances are usually quite limited. And I know Adrian actually got quite a few minutes because Alisson had a few injuries. But normally, a keeper's opportunities are fairly limited. And particularly when you're a younger keeper, you want to be playing week in and week out. Which is why you often see keepers willing to drop down the leagues and um, to get that first team opportunity. Matip out before Nat. Look, do you know what? I wouldn't disagree with you. Um, if you offered me, if an offer came in of 10 million for both of them, I would go on the side of moving on Joel Matip as well because of his injury record and because uh, he's the wrong side of 30. So I've no disagreement with you there, mate. If we're to keep a fifth choice centre back, I'd rather have Phillips instead of Matip because of the rigours of the Premier League. And we know that Nat Phillips' body will, will hold up, but you can't tell me you think he's a better player than John Matip because he isn't. Matip is a, is a better centre-back, but we both know that, um, or we all know, I should say, that Matip's injury record is unfortunately not great. Kamavinga, I think, I know a lot of people keep bringing up this guy's name, 18 years of age, one year left on his contract, but there's a lot of talk that he's going to go to PSG, or, um, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that there's going to be anything from our side around Kamavinga. Again, Higo Mark 1, I'm not talking about Coutinho, mate, so you can ask me as many questions as you want about him. I've said everything I need to say about Felipe Coutinho. Big Sam for Everton. <laughs> I wonder who will get that job, by the way. 
that which is interesting. Again, for those that are coming in a little bit late and didn't hear the giveaway winners, uh, the first prize, the big prize, goes to Joe Harvey, just to reiterate that. Second prize of a £50 Amazon gift card goes to Tom Hume, H-U-L-M-E. And third prize of another £50 Amazon gift card goes to Cam Vlog. So just to make sure, in case people didn't hear those, we will post the winners' names on our socials as well. Uh, Berea, I think, sunny side up. Um, probably priced too highly for us. Um, so I think I'm, I'm, I, I could be wrong on this. I know I've seen something about 52 million for Nicola Berea, but I don't know if it was that they had a, an offer on the table of 52 million and they wanted perhaps more, or if the price point was thought to be this, but it's actually this. But it seems Inter want around 70 million from which coincidentally enough is the amount of money they need to raise to um to stave off the problems they're having with, with football finances because of COVID and stuff. Can I answer the super chat questions? I've answered every single one of them, mate, so I don't know what you're moaning about. I've answered every super chat question that I've been asked in this chat so far, mate. Selling that Phillips is a crime against Gaussiality, done that one. You should check out Riddle Back, who've done that one. So I don't know what the fuck you're moaning at me for, pal. You're moaning at me about something I haven't even done wrong. Just because I don't read the name of the person that sends the Super Chat, if I'm replying to it, doesn't mean I'm not replying to it, mate. So I absolutely have read the Super Chats, Princess. So, you know, put your crown back on and relax. Would love us to go for Latoro Martinez. Yeah, I think he might be on the move this summer, Krishna. Um... Inter seem to want to keep hold of Romelu Lukaku over him and Latoura Martinez, look, he's a good player. No, not a can't sit here and say anything but that. Um, Ruben Neves, no. You know, we don't need another deep-lying midfielder. Um, you know, if we were talking about a like-for-like -like replacement for Genie even, the manager seemed to be putting it out there that we have enough central midfielders. So uh, I don't think we're going to be in for Ruben Neves. How much would a Kone cost? Again, Chris, I'm just going off figures that I've seen put out there publicly. It seems to be about 25 million. Now, I don't know if that's pound or euro, by the way. So I'll always work on the assumption that it's the more expensive one, which would be pound. Is Gomez going to accept third choice centre-back? I don't think he has to accept it, John. I think he has to prove to the manager that he deserves to be in there ahead of Canade. I would suggest that if Gomez is fit, he'll probably start the season ahead of Canade because he's used to the system and he's used to the way we play in the league and stuff like that. And it's not unusual for Liverpool to take time to to bed in new players like Canade or anybody else. So I think it's going to be up to Joe Gomez, one, to make sure that he's, he's able to stay fit enough, and then two, just show that he's at a level ahead of Canade. But I tell you what, I'm looking forward to the battle. I really am. I mean, that is three nice centre-backs to have at the club right there. Uh, you all right, Craig? What's happening in the world of football today? How are you, Regan Taylor Reid? I'm tickety boo, buddy. Tickety boo. Looking forward to uh, this is my downtime, by the way. So between now and when the Euro starts, we're we're doing the bare minimum across the channels. We're sorting out sponsorship for next season. We're sorting out a few other bits and pieces, but this is like my holiday, really. So I'm good, man. I'm good. Thank you. Feeling a lot less stressed than normal. Did I see the pictures of Graven Burt in a Liverpool shirt? I didn't, but. You know, Graven Birch of Ajax is another very, very good player, Rodders. And actually a name that I haven't spoken about much, and that's my bad. I, I probably should have mentioned him a bit more. Again, the only thing that I would say is, do we bring in another young, what is he, 18 or 19 now, Graven Birch uh, player? Or do you let him develop for another year or so and then have another look? But I certainly would say he's on our radar, no doubt about that. As is, another name I haven't mentioned in a while is... Um, Gio Reyna of Borussia Dortmund. Klopp's a huge fan of Reyna's. And I know that I've seen some of the scouting reports and stuff sent out about him. And he's somebody who I wouldn't be surprised that maybe next summer. But the one name that I haven't, I've haven't, i been saving because I wanted us to savour this and enjoy it together. I'm sure you've all seen what Jude Bellingham quote tweeted last night. I think it was... Um, I think it was Sam Maguire, if I'm if I'm correct, who put up a, a tweet on Twitter saying Gerard massively underrated with a kind of compilation of videos of Stevie G doing what Stevie G did. And um I'm sure that you've all seen the Jude Bellingham quote tweet of it, which got us all a little bit happy, didn't it? Because you know, Bellingham's not gone anywhere this summer, no matter what happens. He's in the Garrett Southgate squad for the Euros, he's gonna be at Borussia Dortmund for the season ahead, but 
if he looks up to Stevie G and, you know, we've seen Haaland say that he's the next Stevie G as well with regards to Bellingham, then, ooh, that might be the one. That's why I've been a bit calm about the central midfielder issue because I'm wondering, you know, we've heard about Liverpool cutting their cloth and waiting for a generational talent. Well, maybe I was a bit misguided. Maybe we're all a little bit misguided. Maybe that'll be next summer and maybe that'll be Jude Bellingham. I know United fought really hard to get him out of Birmingham before he went to Dortmund and he decided that his best move would be to Dortmund. But I tell you what, if we have to wait a year and we go and we sign Daka and somebody like Rafinha as well as Kanade, I'll wait that year for Jude Bellingham. No problem whatsoever because he is... He could well be the next Stephen Gerrard and I don't think that that's... Obviously he's not scouts and he won't have the same, you know emotion to Liverpool but I'm talking about the type of player fuck me I mean whew, I would uh, I would happily wait a year to get Jude Bellingham if that's the case and um, I think you guys probably agree you know another year with the midfield that we have Hendo's a year older Millie's a year older uh, Curtis Jones has come on a little bit over that year as well maybe that's the case maybe that's the kind of generational talent that we've been spoken about or we've been told in the media that Liverpool have been waiting for maybe it's the midfielder so I'll tell you what I I got really excited last night around the whole Bellingham stuff and I've annoyed the shit out of people today trying to find out if there's any legs to it and I still don't know but god I'm excited about it um He's my new Mbappe now. The Mbappe train's gone, sailed, it's gone off into the next station. But I'm all on the Jude Bellingham train now. Get him to Liverpool immediately. Well, next summer, I mean. Um, he's called Jude. That's what makes him scouse. Fair play. No, I mean, I, I like the link. I like what you've done there, RB, H E. Yeah, I'm all on board that one. Hey, Jude. Oh, God, can you imagine him at Liverpool? Oh. I won't tell you what I'm getting, but it's a happy feeling. <laughs> uh, do I think Jota will start next season? Absolutely. Now, look, we're going to rotate, of course. We have a lot of games to play, but yeah, Jota should be okay. Well, he was okay at the end of the... He played the last day of the season for a few minutes, and he'll go to the Euros of Portugal. Um, so, yes, I do think he'll start, but... Oh, Jude. Jude Bellingham, I mean... Am I am I mad on this, ladies and gentlemen? What's your feeling on Jude Bellingham? Do you think that the, that there might be something to this? That that might be the the generational talent that we have to wait a little bit longer for? And again, with our midfielders getting another year older, maybe maybe James Milner hangs up his boots or goes elsewhere at the end of next season. Um, I don't, I don't know. I'm I'm quite excited about it. I have to say, it's um. Some people have been saying it to me for a few weeks, and by people I mean friends of mine who are quite well known in the media world. But I've kind of brushed it off because I thought it was kind of more hopeful thinking, but, you know, joining the dots a little bit, I mean, maybe... Um, who even is Vlahovic? He's a striker, mate, that plays for Fiorentina. I think he's 21, if my memory's right. And Fiorentina are willing to listen to offers from this season, but at an astronomical amount of money. And uh, he had a decent season for Fiorentina, albeit their season wasn't great overall. But that that's who he is. I've seen somebody in the chat just ask who he was. What do I think about Kader staying? You know, Nikhil, it's difficult because I know you're a regular viewer, mate. You've been here for a while. You've probably seen me defending Naby Keita a lot because I believe that there's talent in there. But I'm not going to lie, I'm getting towards the end of my patience around that fitness as well. And we can't afford to be going into a season carrying more potentially injury-prone players. So um, we'll wait and see what happens. I've not known of any concrete interest in him. Somebody suggested Rayal earlier on in the stream. I've not seen it. seen a little bit around Leicester City, but I don't know how true that would be. But yeah, Bellingham. I mean, that that's it now. That that's in my head. Next season, Bellingham's going on the back of the shirt. Keep loan or sell Origi? Sell. Now there is talk of a potential loan to Fenerbahce, Ryan. But I would sell him. I wouldn't loan him anyway. I'm I'm sick of Liverpool loaning out players. People either want to buy these guys or they don't. So, yeah. Excuse me. All aboard the train. Choo -choo! I'm on it, Zach. I'm on it, mate. Favourite musicians? Uh, I've got a really eclectic choice of musicians. Anyone from Oasis, Garth Brooks, dance music, hip-hop, R&B, mate. I listen to anything, to be honest with you. Boy, boy bands, everything. 
Um, right, what have we got? Jones follows Bellingham screamer with no S. I don't know what that means, mate. Um, what formation would you play with the new signings? I still think we're going to play with four at the back. I mean, I love the idea of a three at the back, by the way, but I just don't see... I don't see it being something that Klopp moves to. So I think we're probably going to play some some form of 4-2-3, whether that's a 4... Or excuse me, 4-3-3, whether that's a 4-2-3-1 or 4-2-1-3. I, I don't know. But I think unless Klopp changes direction a lot, which we'll find out over pre-season, by the way. 3-4-3 is possible, CR7. Yeah, but... For me, mate, you'd want to have six centre-backs at the club to play that because you want to have a backup in every position. And 3-4-3, three, three, of course, becomes you know 5-2-3 when you're defending and 3-4-3 three, three when you're attacking. Uh, Kate Gordon, any chance to play any matches? Again, it's a good show and not one that we can forget about. Obviously, we signed him from Derby County, a very, very well-thought-of player. And I'm sure he'll get pre-season. He'll go on tour with the lads. He'll go to the pre-season training camp. And then a decision, like with a lot of these younger players, will be made on what's best um, for the upcoming season. Do I want Suarez back? He's going to stay at Atleti. Mo, he's definitely staying there. They, they, that's the words out of his own mouth anyway. But I want you now, Craig. I hear you, man. I hear you, sunny side up. I mean, we'd all love him now, but Dortmund have categorically said he ain't for sale this summer. They're looking into a summer where they will probably lose Sancho, could lose Haaland, and they're not going to want to lose Bellingham on top of that in one summer. Any news on Shaqiri? Um, nothing new, Mark, other than the Fenerbahce links and a couple to Spain. Uh, I think the six million that's been doing the rounds in the media is way too cheap. But look, ladies and gents, I'm going to head off. And I don't know if I'll be here tomorrow, by the way. I'm not sure or not yet if I'll be able to come on tomorrow night. But we do have a lot of stuff coming up. We're going to be covering the Euros. And I'm going to be doing all the games that I'm doing. I'll be doing here on Anfield Agenda. So I'll be doing all the England group games. The Germany, France and uh, what? who else is in that group? Portugal, I think it is. I'll be doing those group games as well. Would I have Daka or Jude? It's completely different players in completely different positions, mate. It doesn't make any sense to say, would I have one or the other? One's about 17 million and the other's probably going to cost about 60 million, if not more. Uh, but look, ladies and gentlemen, I will chat to you soon. Don't forget to check out the Anfield Agenda TikTok account, which is flying up at the minute. Um, we're, yeah, Anfield Agenda on TikTok, Instagram, uh, Twitter, Facebook, and of course on here. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for your time this evening as always ladies and gentlemen congratulations to the prize winners if you didn't win don't worry we've got lots more stuff we'll be giving away over the coming weeks and months as well have yourselves a lovely evening thank you so much for tuning in take care